Welcome to Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time, Part 47. This series contains a lot of very useful tips taken from quite a lot of my videos. And generally, around the time that I make these compilation videos, the topics are usually in response to questions that I get at the time. I get a daily barrage of questions, some good, some not so good, about how to do this and how to do that. If the questions are from my Patreon supporters, I reply immediately. I will always try to help people who help me. Unfortunately, though, recently, Patreon, in their infinite wisdom, set up a free membership structure. And owing to this, I have lost a lot of patrons. Once the number of patrons goes below a certain number, then I will be unable to make the videos like I do every day. Please be aware, if you cancel your Patreon subscription and become a free member, you will not be able to see what you can currently see. And also, you will be automatically deleted and blocked. I really cannot put in the 40 hours plus per week that I do for free. I am not a rich man and I do need to pay my bills. Recently, I have been receiving a lot of emails asking about piping of steam plants. This episode, for instance, is all about piping. The piping needs to blend in with the character of the steam plant, so it's important to think through the pipe runs before you start. This steam plant is a really good example to use to outline the piping situation. In the centre of the steam chest on the Cyclops engine, there is this steam flange, and it's held on there using two 10BA bolts, which are very small and very fiddly. I'm assuming that they are 10 BA bolts, they could be metric, either way they are very small. So I start to remove the flange and then I thought to myself, hang on a minute, there's a much better way of doing this. I was originally going to remove the flange and silver solder 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter copper pipe into it. But instead I'm using a tailstock die holder fitted with a quarter by 40 threads per inch die. And here is the end result. I was able to cut sufficient threads on this flange to accept a PM Research right hand elbow. These excellent cast elbows are from the USA and as standard they come threaded quarter by 40 but I'm told by a few viewers that quarter by 40 in the American standard has a different pitch to quarter by 40 in the British standard. So as I showed in a previous video I just re-threaded them with a quarter by 40 tap from my box of quarter by 40 taps. And here's what it looks like. This is a highly magnified image and the brass looks very shiny because I've cleaned it up on my polishing spindle. But eventually it will settle back to the same colour as a steam chest. I'm just about to silver solder these parts together which will connect the steam turret to the Cyclops engine steam inlet. I'm not showing the silver soldering operation, I've shown that many times in my videos. So if you're not sure how to silver solder, have a look at silver soldering for beginners. That's another video on this channel by the way, and if you follow those directions, the piping will end up looking like this. This is a main steam pipe from the turret to the engine, so it's going to get very hot and it's going to be wrapped in string, so there's no point in going to town polishing it. The only parts that are polished up were the brass parts at the end, the steam unions. So how did I know how long this pipe was going to be and how did I make it and how did I bend it? Three questions. Well I didn't bother measuring anything with a ruler. I did everything by eye. First of all, I bent the pipe between my fingers very carefully, so as not to kink the pipe. And once I had the correct distance between the bends, all I had to do was cut the pipe to length and silver solder the unions on the end of it. And of course, not forgetting to put the nuts on first. Now comes the tricky part. The steam chest on the Vulcan beam engine is on the inside of the engine, and getting these small 10BA bolts off is difficult. These bolts were quite tight, and the only way I could slacken them off was to use one of the incredibly cheap spanners that I bought from Blackgate's Engineering a while back. Despite having quite a good selection of miniature tools, including a nut spinner that I turned down to fit in inaccessible places, it was very difficult. Taking out the lower bolt was even worse, this was very inaccessible, but by using my trusty right angled Blackgate spanner first, followed by this nut spinner which doesn't fit the bolt, I got the bottom bolt out as well. The original pipe, the one that I'm just removing, was bent at the correct angle and it stuck out of the side of the engine at the correct angle, but the steam union on the other end of it wasn't soldered in place. 
Unbelievably, the union was just a push fit, probably with a bit of Loctite on it, on the end of the pipe. First of all, I unsoldered the flange from the original pipe, and then I resoldered the flange and a commercial steam union onto another piece of 530 seconds pipe. So it's silver soldered at both ends now. In this clip, I'm fitting a double union because what I'm going to do is connect the steam pipe from the turret directly to this part of the engine. I'm applying some Loctite 542 to the flange. There aren't any gaskets on this engine, and I don't want it to leak and have to come off again. Loctite 542, which is a hydraulic sealant, usually works well in this application. Provided both of the mating surfaces are flat, there shouldn't be a problem. The next step was to bend a piece of 530 seconds of an inch diameter copper pipe to go from this point to the steam turret. When I finally tighten up this union, I'll use a spanner on the centre part and another spanner on the nut. The other end just goes to the steam turret, as you can see here. Running copper pipe lengths is pretty much like running electrical cables. They need to be neat, and I always sit and think about the positioning of the pipe runs before starting the job. This pipe, for instance, is the main steam feed to the turret from the boiler, and I need this to look sympathetic to the piping that goes from the displacement lubricator to the engine. It's no good just connecting the parts from point A to point B and just hoping that's going to be it. Piping needs to look good. It's a very visible part of the steam plant, and often it's possibly the first thing that you see, even before the steam engines. So my tip to any viewers is sit and think about this for a while and figure out the best way to put the piping in place so that it looks good. Now you can see what I mean. Both of these lengths of pipe are going to be covered in string, so I left a suitable gap between the piping to accommodate the thickness of the string. After re-threading yet another PM Research elbow, I'm fitting a union in place because this is going to be the main outlet for the water from the water tank. After applying some Loctite 542, I can now tighten the elbow into position, and I'm using a Barco adjustable spanner on the elbow as usual, and you will notice on this clip I'm also using a normal spanner for the union that tightens into the tank itself. Just like the steam piping, this water pipe also needs to look good. Once again, I'm bending this freehand. I generally do that with small bore piping. Here's an aerial view of the plant, and you can see the principle. The piping's looking quite neat. The piping run that I've just made from the water tank to the boiler feed hand pump follows the contour of the baseboards almost perfectly. And so now you can get an impression of what the plant's going to look like. It needs this copper piping to be in place. And my advice to beginners is sit and think for quite a while before starting the piping job, then you will get it right first time. And that's about it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.